Hello and welcome to the Night Minute Cynics. I am not Christopher Gallagher. You're not. I am so not. Um, is that not as handsome. I'm just saying. This is Ian Dugan. This also not as handsome. This is Alan Edgar. I'm oh. Christian Wolf. We're here because there's been a coup. This is a new Night Minute Cynic regime. Christopher Gallagher. Under new management. Under new management. Better management. Uh, <laughs> most no apology, argue. no surrender. Exactly. Look, we got a lot to get through. Uh, and I'm we not do, one I have to say, the level of preparation that's going on here, Christian has taken us to a, a different level. I've just realised how much you interrupt. Yeah, that's my That's my <laughs> stick. <laughs> that's, 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 my stick. <laughs> that's my thing. Let's start with the funnest. Craig Levine. I don't like Ian Dugan. He's 54 years old. He's 54 years old. He's been in management for 22 years. He's managed five clubs, Scotland. He has as many trophies as strikers in Prague. He's won nothing. He's won not a single promotion. And still, Ian Dugan, I have the fear about Craig Levine. Do you have the fear this weekend? I'm, I think it's good to have the fear. You don't want to be going into a game like this thinking, oh, that's going to be nice and relaxing. I, I, I think Craig Levine has been a, a phenomenal, he's played his part very well in the banter years. Mm -hmm. he's, he's always worth a quote. Uh, he's very amusing. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't have the greatest record against Hearts. I'm glad we're not having to play the final at Tynecastle. I don't think that was ever likely to happen that we would move the final to Tynecastle, but I'm still <laughs> glad it's not happening. Hypothetically. Yeah, yeah we're, we're happy. Good, um, yeah. My issue, Alan, is that Craig Levine is somebody I can sit sitting obsessing for weeks, planning something, having lots of stuff on the wall. Um, he's had the time, he's had the experience, he has all had this time to plot something against Celtic. Are you worried? Always, always going into a cup final, um, especially... Purely the fear comes from having to watch Craig Levine potentially do a press conference where he's won. <laughs> that is where the fear comes from. But I think the one thing you know going into it is, is that Hearts will play a... They might play a variation of it, but they will play a certain way. And that helps a little with us being able to counteract that. You're right, for the weeks, I've had nothing else on for weeks. Matches that are purely f fixture fulfilment, that's it. Let me take you all back to... The 11th of August 2018. I have a visual aid. There's a lot of red arrows on this. Red arrows is Hearts missing passes. Yeah. 11th of August, Hearts had 189 passes. They usually have, that's 40% less than they usually have. Um, they missed 77 of them. Um, the pass completion rate in their own half was 56%. That's, that's bad. Yeah. It, it's terrible. Yeah. They made 19 fouls, yeah. which is a lot. This just sounds like an awful Hearts game. And the scoreline was Hearts 1, Celtic 0. They did have Kyle Lafferty at that point. And True. for all the, the messy... Ky Kyle Lafferty oh. is... is uh, I, can't, I can't even think confounds the expectations. He, he, he's, not, he's barely a footballer. But... On, You're saying Celtic is guaranteed victory because Kyle Lafferty is No, in the game. I'm just saying that when this Lafferty was like playing it. for Hearts, he had a fucking very spawny record of scoring against us. He scored about four or five games in a row or something like that. And, and as he, it's kind of like he has some sort of extra non football yeah. motivation to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Alan Edgar, the reason why I bring up the game in August is that that day I think Celtic just got sucked in. Mm -hmm. Hearts went for blood and thunder. And Celtic got tricked into playing their games. Craig Gordon had the third most passes of any Celtic player that game. The two players that had more was the two centre-backs. Celtic just needs to keep a cool head and not get sucked into the Levine game plan, don't they? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think one thing that we need tomorrow is patience. The first 25 minutes you know, 30 minutes, even into the second half, if it's still nil-nil, that's, that's okay. You don't need to go and chase it. You know, obviously you want to be aggressive and on the front foot, but this is a really big pitch. I'm doing. Anybody that's yeah. ever been will know yeah. it is very, it's really wide, it's really long. And what that means is if you want to try and choke a game out, it's quite hard if the other team keep their width, keep their discipline and try and use that space. And I think if we can do that, and sometimes, probably more so recently, 
we have became a little bit impatient if things aren't going away. Rain shoes. Exactly. And the concern is that if we get frustrated that we don't score a goal quickly or that we're not leading at half time, then we might then give them the opportunities that they will be yeah. waiting on. Hearts will take, if they can get one chance in this game, that's Craig Levine will take that at this point in time. One chance to win the game and then see it out. I think that's what they would take. Yeah. I thought, to be fair to, to Lennon and to Celtic in the semi final, you know, the first 35 minutes, Celtic d- did show that patience and actually everything wasn't really going great. And, and obviously, your boy gets sent off, and then after that, the game's completely different and, and you know, we go and boss it. So I think that attitude and that mindset will help in this game. Well, assuming that we can replicate it. I think this Hearts team and stats, let me give you some stats because we know how interested you guys are in stats. Um, Hearts has 48% of the goals in the league has come from set plays. Yeah. That's the highest. Yeah. Uh, only 10% of the goals that comes from a build-up play as the third lowest. 50% of their passes has been taken in the opposition half and 62% of their fouls is committed in the opposition half that's the highest in the league so what Harsh wants is just get the I said, what, that was really a really long way of saying they're just going to punt it up and get in your face yeah. and that's what they want to do and they want Celtic to fall into that trap and punt the ball up to them Yeah. So how I, read a, I read a weird start this week this is like Celtic, one of Celtic's best defensive performances this season. It's like the fourth lowest it, it, total of goals that in, we've in, in conceded the in, like, um, in, since the league began, which is strange. Just, I wouldn't have thought just that. Just slightly worse than Ronnie Dyla's first season. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Oh, the Dyla bus is coming. Um, but for, for me, Alan, there's one player there, um, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, but Uche Ikpiasu. Mm-hmm. He... First of all, having spoken to people who's, who's, who's played against him, um, he is frightfully strong. He, but if you kind of have a look, it's, it's, it's two interesting stats with him I have. He, has, he commits the most fouls in the league by far, almost five per every 90 minutes. But oh, any players, like even defenders? <laughs> any really? players. God, that, maybe it, there's something in this that stuff. Dolly Menga has the second most, and he's got about one and a half less per game. Wow. Um, but also that he gets to a lot of chances, but he haven't converted them. And that gives me the fear, because my stat brain says, if you keep getting to chances, but you're not scoring them, you know what's going to happen soon? You're going to score, score them. Is, I'm what's a, the deal I mean, with he's, his fitness? He's, he's, it's, Levine is kind of saying, he, yeah, he's, he's got good hopes about yeah. him being ready. Which means he's going to be playing. I, I've, you know, again, my fear. Let's the, talk about my fear. The, the one thing I would say about um, Ek Pietsu, we'll go with that. Um, I think that if we can try and if we can squeeze our lineup quite high, then I would be confident of being able to manage him in that position. Yep. The one concern I do have is, is that if Hearts are able to work the ball, and I don't mean work it all the way up, but if Hearts can work their centre halves up until pretty close to the halfway line, mm. and then they start sending the ball forward from that position. I would be quite concerned because then you you're really pressing high. I want Celtic pressing up really high, squeezing that lineup, make him work, make him do those doggies between the defenders, make him do the doggies Doggy all the way up and that. back, and that's we really. We even got call the doggies in Norway. Do you know that? Oh, that's, I like yeah, that. I thought that was a Scottish term. No, I'm a bit disappointed actually. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if we can get him, because it's not nice, but he has been injured, and he has been missing, yeah. and that's a really hard shift for him to do. And Craig Levine will yeah. demand that he works it. So. I know it's, you're obviously, ideally, we want to work our full-backs, our centre-halves, but we need to think about the other side of the game as well. And if we can move the ball quickly across our line, try and get ourselves out and pass that kind of initial press, then I think it'll allow us to play. And it'll also mean that he has to work extremely hard, which I think can then make it more difficult, because if they are going to share up to him quickly, that's a quick turnaround for him. Yeah. And I think that's a lot to do, especially over 90 minutes. Starts, you're maybe looking at, if you can, well, Levine, we think, kind of gets 60 minutes out of him. Mm-hmm. So, again... Patience, can we weather the storm? If he's not going to last the 90, do you know, does our fitness start to show from, from that last final third? Yeah. I mean, obviously, big week for Hearts fans. Uh, Tory leadership campaign. <laughs> um, 
their fan TV show, The, the Terrace, has been renewed for another season. Um, and also the cup final, but, but let's, let's forget about them. Let's talk about Celtic. Let me, let me read you some results. 1-0, 3-0, 2-0, 2-1, 4-2, 2-0, 4-0, 2-0, 3-0, 1-0, 3-0. 11 games in a row at Hamden. Wow. Slash Murrayfield for Celtic. 11 wins, 27 goals, 3 conceded. Celtic are invincible in domestic Hamden appearances. Ian Dugan, is that, does that matter? Um, I think there are people who would try and put about that there was like a, a Lennon Hamden hoodoo. So essentially, your, 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 your results there were broadly under Rogers. Yep. Perhaps some, some Dyla. No. No, there's not. No, no. Post, post Dyla the, lost. Post the Rangers game. Um, um, well, he didn't lose against Rangers. Like, let's be clear about that. <laughs> knocked out on the technical. Knocked out, okay. Right. Um, so I think, I think the fact that Lennon has has kind of got over his Hamden hoodoo in terms of what we did in the semi-final and going in with, with that sort of record. It's positive. Do you know what? History... We've got a chance to make history tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, to get... By virtue of being in the position to win a treble treble, that's what you have to do. So actually, we, we, can, we have to do that one more time and we're history makers. Yeah. Well, We'll talk a little bit about Rory Price was at the press conference for us yesterday. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about he asked Neil Lennon, but Neil Lennon was at pains, and so was Scott Brown yesterday, to say, look, this is just another game, and you know the reporters kept asking, how will he feel if you win it? And they're like, uh, we'll talk about it on Saturday. And they were very like, this is not a normal game. Whereas Craig Levine is, this is not a normal game. This is the <laughs> biggest game of your pathetic little heart's life. And that difference in kind of... Man management, are you afraid Celtic is too used to this now? And they're kind of just going, ah, we'll eke it out, we'll be fine. And you're going to meet these 11 fired up, uh, you know, players? It's, it, it's difficult because you, you can't really win whatever you say. If you go in and say, yeah, we, we understand the context of this and this could be the, the most success, the, the greatest domestic achievement Celtic have ever had. It's world, it's world news, that, it's genuinely that, that, world that news. That would then suggest that they're thinking about winning before it's happened. You know, yeah. you've already seen the replies when they talk about the potential bus parade, etc. People yeah. saying, but and they're at pains to say that Hearts have also organised a bus parade. That players, which, you, you don't mess around with traffic management logistics. <laughs> you just don't. And you this certainly do not tweet fake council reports about potential about managers and man, man, manager Monday. If I was Glasgow City Council, I'd be furious. Glasgow City I, Council came out and said, "That's a fake." Look at us. It's fake news. With our bands on the Twitter account. The, the, the thing for me is, is the players really, you, you will absolutely understand the context of it. They, they don't live in a bubble. But what they need to try and do is just think about the 11 players playing the 11 players on that pitch. And they have got a great record there. Hamden doesn't really hold any fear. I don't think it will hold any fear for Hearts either in that respect because they know the pressure is all on Celtic. So it is about trying to be prepared for it, be prepared for what Hearts are going to do in the day and make sure that we go out and really try and stick to that game plan. It's, sometimes it might actually be about keeping it a bit calmer yeah. than getting yourself worked up. Um, and I think maybe the Rangers game recently, that was a big game. We were hoping for a big performance that day and we didn't get it. Hopefully that we can look back in that and say, learn the lesson from that, go into this game, a bit more organised, a bit more prepared. And really the most important thing for me, with a plan, with a plan. Yeah. So, visual aid time. This is from Matt Evans' uh, match preview. He's got yeah. his team up. Let's talk about the team. Yeah. Um, he's holding the thing up in front of the camera. That's well, good. that's fine. We'll do a voiceover. Um Oh, injury update. He's got, he's got a different one for me. The only injury uh, doubt um, of the players that maybe could make is, is Oli Burke. Yeah, I've got a doubt Scott. about Oli Burke as well. It's not his fucking <laughs> oh. fitness. Oh. That's why he's on. Um, oh. Scott Brown, James Forrest, KT all trained yesterday. Yeah. Ian Dugan, you got your team up. For me, if you look at it in kind of stages, goalkeeping and defence, my only question is Joe Sowa Benkovic. How about hey, you? Hey, Joe, uh, Joe Zoe. You going with Joso? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you go with the uh, with the the form player. I think he's been very good under Lennon, and I don't see a reason to change that. Particularly not for a player who might not be there next season. Bain, Lustig, I, uh, Joso, Tierney. Yeah, absolutely. Picks okay. itself. Let's move on. I think we all agree that Scott Brown and Callum McGregor will play two of the three. Yep. 
We have a choice of three again. Yeah. Uh, Oliver Nacham, Tom Raj Rajik, Tom Rajik, and Ewan Henderson. I went for Nacham. In fact, in fact, I have unashamedly uh, just agreed with about Alan Edgar said in the pod on Tuesday, Monday. It's I worse people to agree with on the pod. Well, there's you know, better. That's it. Also worse. Yeah. No. I. I. I think Nacham. I think again he had a good game last week. I think he's better in that forward role. Um, and and I mean, Rogic has been big game player. I, do you know, I think actually he's a player that can have an impact off the bench. And and you know you're not going to get 90 minutes out of him anyway. So I, I think I'd probably rather start with Cham and then you've got Rogic coming on to potentially do what he's done in ha at Hamden so many times. I'll let you go. Yeah, I th I th I'd like to see Cham start. I think he would enjoy it. I think he would enjoy the pitch, especially if we've got good width, um, which at Hamden is key. Um, we're going to talk about Abad Amaj in the kind of left midfield position. Yeah. And I think the only possible alternative there is that you could look at moving Callum McGregor no. out. No. No? Okay, let's not do that then. Um, I think that's a, that's a yeah. possibility in terms of it's been a problem position. If he doesn't decide to give it to Mikey Johnson, then I think you could maybe use McGregor out there. And then you get the Rogic and Cham and Brown situation in the middle of the park. And I think it's maybe your strongest 11, but it's not your strongest use of the, that kind of 11 yeah. players. You said it there. I think Edward, if he's fit, which he thinks is, he starts up front. 100%. James Forrest, if he's fit, he starts on the right. 100%. 100%. 110%. Can't wait to see him. Can't wait to see him. <sighs> this is a tough job, by the way. I'm just, but, but left side of midfield. For yeah. me, is Mikey Johnson. <laughs> Scott Skinclair, Johnny Hayes, what's your poison? So I've, I've uh, not even a, a Sinclair apologist, but I think I've been a Sinclair fan. I think Lennon has treated him fairly badly. Uh, however, I'm going to go with Mikey Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Just to convince stuff. And, and I think Lennon will probably end up picking Hayes. That's, that's <laughs> <what I think laughs> I don't know, who, who do you pick? I, I would like to see, I, I would probably start Sinclair. Um, and the, the reason I would do it is because I think, as I've said probably before in recent games, he's never started, so I fully expect he will go with another option. But I would like to see Sinclair play there because he understands that position. Yeah. He understands where to be, how to do it. And quite frankly as well, Sinclair off the bench really has never been a good option no. for Celtic. I don't think I've ever seen him come off the bench and really make a great impact, um, maybe with the exception of Athens at the start of the year. Um, Whereas I think if we needed to bring Johnson in, no pressure, he comes on. If you, we do bring him on needing something, then it's because the team haven't performed. If you start Johnson, though, it's a big ask, and it's another maybe one of those scenarios where has he had enough game time in the season to then justify giving him the start in one of the biggest games of the season? Yeah. And I'm not sure that's entirely fair to, to Mikey Johnson. I, I guess it's more of a natural position for him. Yeah. I think the, the, the situations where the pressure's been on him and he's not performed, he's been asked to do... Something that was frankly ridiculous. Centre forward, and, right yeah, wing back. Centre forward, right, yeah. Do you know what? A position that seemed to change every 10 minutes at Ibrox. So, I think I pretty much agree on the team then. Um, Neil Lennon likes a surprise. Royal Price had a question for him at, at the press conference um, yesterday. He has essentially said to Lennon, you know, these three, four months at Celtic, what's that kind of done for you as a manager? And it's really interesting because Lennon says, you know, that he had to get used to a different type of management. He was there by himself. It's a picking up a style he said he wasn't not that used to, and he had to adjust in many different ways. And he also said later he didn't want to change too much, but there is things he wanted to change, but that is not the point. This could vary. I think it's at least 50-50 that this is Neil Lennon's last every game as a yeah. Celtic manager. Does he do that Neil Lennon thing and pull a rabbit out of the hat? Does he does do something different? Is that urge to kind of put a staff or something going to come in? I I think, is that a good thing? I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I, th I think he can pull a rabbit out of the hat within the confines of not necessarily changing the system. For me, Johnny Hayes starting on the left would be probably the most obvious rabbit for him to pull out the hat. Okay. Um, I think putting Dembele on the bench would be an interesting... It would give them something to think about. I mean, he tore it up for 45 minutes against them last week. Where's his parents? Is he? Yeah. yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? And, and actually, like, I, I, ended up, I ended up naming a bench as well. And essentially, if Burke's not there... It's, it's not, not that many. 
Well, yeah, I guess probably Henderson might be ahead of him, but... You've got Dembele with a couple of stars beside yeah, him. Because I well. wanted to talk about him. The director is, is flashing his something. And Alan Edgar, predictions. I think Celtic will win 2 nothing. I think it will be quite a, a slow game. I don't think you're going to get a classic cup final. And if they do, you do, then I would be happy with that because I think that would go in our favour. Um, I think it'll be a sticky game. I think it might be quite slow, but I think Celtic will win 2 nothing. Um, I think both goals will come in the second half. And Who's going to score them? It's going to be the French connection for me. Encham and Eddie. Ian Dugan. I, 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 I think I would go so all over I, I think 2-1. 2-1. Two one and and again maybe maybe Forrest and Edward. Okay. I think I think like Eddie that. will ri- will will rise to the occasion. I'm gonna go for Celtic on penalties. Oh, oh no, no. I don't think I can do that. And uh, Scott Bain to score the winner. Scott Bain to score the winner. And then Arthur Boric, <laughs> top right, Ben Staley. Exactly. What a penalty. Let wow. me tell you about 1995, the semi-final of the Glomdalen Cup, where I did the exact same thing. Um, Beautiful. I think we all agree that this has been a far superior hosting appearance. The live stats lunch, we'll be yeah. calling it from now on. I think we've done enough to stop Brexit. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. We will have Matt Evans preview up. Matt Evans has done 35 match previews this season. What a boy. Their website is a bit sketchy. We think it might be some sort of attack on us. It's highly likely. We'll try to get a website out. If not, we'll get Matt's review out there somehow. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, we could uh, decompose it into uh, one of those uh, what we'll tweet do is threads, like we'll one of 67. Someone, we'll get someone just to narrate it. Yeah. Whoever's got the best voice, they'll read yeah. it out. We'll put that as get my dad to do it. He's got an awesome radio voice. There we go. There's an, offer, there's an offer, Dad. Grandma K will do. Mackay. I do me other purpose. Don't worry, Mackay. Beautiful. Uh, we've done 62 minutes by minutes this season. This will be number 63. Graham will do the minimum minute. Then he'll hop on to an exclusive, our first ever instant reaction Patreon pod. Within one hour of the final whistle, in your ear will be. Hopefully Chris Gallagher, if he resurrects, uh, resurrects himself uh, from his sickbed. Graham McKay will on it. Maybe somebody else. Uh, that will be out within an hour of the game tomorrow. If you want to listen to that, go to patreon.com 90 minutes cynics. If you do that and subscribe on Sunday, you'll get another podcast. Me and oh. Alan Edgar and very special guest star Ian Birchnell, head coach of Östersunds FK Ooh. in Sweden, have done a deep dive. A Deep oh. dive into no the stone was left unturned. Ooh, those not stones, one, not a single hot stone. Calls on the director of football role, what it's like a coach's view from from Ian. Uh, Graham came in to talk about the situ- uh, how they do it in Germany. If you, as us, think that Celtic needs a s- management structure change, listen to that podcast that's out on Sunday. Tell you what, there might be another future podcast not in the near future as well about somebody else it's so all happening Pat- Patreon yeah, is where Patreon. it's at um, I think that's it I got nothing else to say and I'm really hungry um, yeah. treble 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 I, it was not an invitation to sing well but but, but you know I'm just giving Gal some ideas for it's the podcast intro if it's we need it there. come on Celtic